Hey ya, folks, my name is Provis. Welcome back to more Hearts of Iron 4 or Trials of Allegiance. We are playing as a democratic United States of Brazil. And honestly, my plan is going really well so far. Take a look at that faction we've created. Boom, it's a pretty big one. Still gonna have to figure out how I'm getting the rest of my territories away from the Allies one way or another, but the only thing left to do at this point to unite South America, again with the exception of the European colonies, is to take down Brazil. And I'm pretty sure, theoretically, we could invite them into my faction, but, like, I, I, they're not going to accept. So, you know, or even if they did accept, I don't think I can annex them. So, really, why worry about it? I am going to go ahead and pick up Ligiao Estragiera, or however you say that. That's going to get me at least a few more units, get me close up to my 24 cap with this particular general. Not that I need it, but a few extra units wouldn't be so bad. Military axis from France and Britain. Did World War II begin? It did. Okay, World War II officially began a couple of months ago. So, Poland is currently getting eaten. Which is very sad. I'm actually going to Poland sometime in the near future. Secret project. You can't know about what exactly, but you'll find out soon enough. It's gonna be good. Anyway, I don't see any reason not to just let the allies go do what they want. I plan to be good friends with the allies later on if I can. Some doctrines are available. What am I gonna do as far as a navy? Probably, probably not things like fleet and being. I just can't imagine I'm gonna have that. Um, although I do like it. Base strike is pretty solid too, but I find most of the time I end up just going for trade and addiction. Unless I'm going to end up being like a really powerful naval uh, country. I, I just don't, I don't see any reason to do anything other than trade and addiction. It's cheap ships get extra value out of cheap ships. Boom, done. Yep, there goes Warsaw. Ah, oh, what a shame. Um, probably going to continue going down my usual integrated support, I would assume. I'm trying to remember if they reworked any of this in a way that matters... It is nice having a lot of line artillery, but I think it's still generally better to go for integrated support so you can get more value out of all of your support companies. Again, I don't really follow the meta anymore. I just kind of do what I'm going to do. Hey, let's go ahead and invite corporations. Lucidus is playing Helldivers 2. Good lord, that game just keeps coming up. I gotta play more of it sometime. It just seems so freaking fun. More doctrines? Sure, we'll go for the ground support. Not that I have any planes to work with. I should have finished researching some bombs, though, so we actually can design some casts. Not to mention, I do have a design for my uh, basic airframes down here, so we will be able to start building up some very basic fighters. I just need to get myself more factories. And when I do start integrating all of these nations into the U.S. of S.A., it's going to be pretty easy to get a lot of factories, I think. Soviet Union declared war on Finland. The Low Countries are being attacked. Let's go ahead and learn about how to integrate people very peacefully into a country. And all of you can go up over here. Honestly, we have the best supply in this general region. I'm surprised how good the supply is looking over in Colombia, actually. These guys are looking pretty solid. They got a lot of supply to go around. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and declare our war, I guess. The Germans should be fairly busy. Hopefully, this does not turn into a weird situation of them joining the Axis. If that happens... What are the Axis going to do? Once I take down Venezuela, they've got no foothold. I do really want to call in Colombia. They have the best borders to work with. Beyond that, actually, let's just go ahead and see if I can call in all of my allies. Other than that, let's start picking and choosing a few decent fights. I want to have as much flanking power as possible. Again, we're going to be fighting in some pretty hostile terrain, so uh, I don't want to necessarily just let these guys push on their own. I want to make sure we get as many surrounds as possible, and I want to get a few different advantages where we are attacking from multiple directions. That's how we're going to overcome their base defenses. Okay, the UK is going to give me a manufacturing corporation. Heavy aircraft designer? That's not as good as I was expecting, to be honest. Um, alright. I'm not going to use heavy aircraft, I'm just not gonna. I'm going to take tank manufacturing. Who else might be able to give me a corporation? We should try to improve relations and see if we can get something out of France as fast as possible. Because I got questions as to whether or not they're going to be able to do that. Also, I can spend command power just to get an extra unit. That seems like a good deal. I'll take it. Uh, let's see. Norway has voluntarily joined... No. There's a civil war in Norway going on. Okay. And Ireland, instead of Iceland, just broke free. And there we go. The United States of South America is now a thing. Okay. So we've changed our color. And thank God, our flag looks so much more acceptable. Okay, I can work with that one. Um, I don't really know if I care much about the counter-operative stuff with the Brit uh, Germans. So, tell you what, let's go ahead and swap over to... Probably our economic stuff. We could get an international loan. Cost me political power, which I don't want right now. But, 
Resource efficiency, construction, factory output, that could end up being really good. Um, let's, of course, start by just getting some more military factories. A hundred political power each? Dude, that's gonna be, um... Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. I, I don't want to lose any political power, thank you. And France is now capitulated. Hmm, great. You still have any corporations? Fr nope, they're, go they're gone. Okay. I did not get there fast. Free France is gone. There is no Free France. It is only Vichy. No, I take it back. Free France is down here in... What is this? I don't know. Um, right. Well, that's awkward as heck. Okay, um... Hey, Sweden! You got anything you want to send my way instead? That'd be great! Well, I'm enjoying at least a couple of very small encirclements here against the Venezuelans. So they're gonna start taking some losses here. And it looks like we're about to get some more little encirclements here and there, which is gonna make my life a little bit easier against Venezuela as well. Well, almost. They brought a bunch more troops over here. Never mind. It sounded great until it wasn't. Just gotta push into Caracas. We're gonna finish off these guys around these ports, actually. Well, hang on. If you guys are already moving in there, problem solved. Let's just go ahead and make sure that the cavalry and stuff rush in here as fast as possible. And I think that finishes them off. Boom, done. Okay, and just like before, we need to supervise Venezuela. Look at all that oil. Hmm. You don't have any sort of a navy, by the way? None whatsoever? That's a little unfortunate, but all right. I'll just take some resource rights. There you go. All right, so with that done, with the exception of the Allies' territory, the entirety of South America is now mine. <laughs> now comes the point where I'm going to want to start maybe uh, integrating some states, if they like me enough, which hopefully they will. So we can't do much of anything to help in World War II for a bit. The British are on their own. France dying as aggressively as they did is very unfortunate. We'll probably have to get involved around the same time that the U.S. does, to be honest. Would it be worth focusing now on some of the uh, military and the air? Or continue working on the economy? I think we got a little bit of time. I'm curious what immigration is going to do, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this one up. I just want to see what happens. And let's promote the integration of Argentina. I feel like they're going to have a halfway decent economy for us to take on. Oh, we can actually invite the Netherlands into our faction? Really? That's an option for us, huh? That'd be interesting. Hold on. The Netherlands. You still own a bunch of lands. The Dutch East Indies, I guess, are technically an independent nation here, so maybe that doesn't work. That'd be interesting, though. But the, the Netherlands are already part of the Allies. So how exactly would that help me? I've got no idea. Sweden agrees to manufacturing. What kind of aircraft do you have? Standardized production. Armored cars. Eh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, I, I, I guess at the end of the day, the aircraft manufacturer, I'll just take it, so I have the option. So let's see, max speed and agility is pretty solid, advanced aerodynamics, blah, blah, blah. All right, we'll just go ahead and put a point in there, and then close air support has more range. Rather go for things like production efficiency gain and stuff. Let's go for the advanced aerodynamics. Yeah, actually, this is okay. This is pretty solid. I'm happy with this. Argentina accepts unification. Full annexation. And I believe I just saw we fully court it, correct? That's not considered to be occupied. Yep. Oh, I get all their stuff. I get all their manpower. I get all their factories. I get everything. Oh, I'm gonna go mad with power on this run. Not to mention I get their entire army. Which of course we're gonna have to rework to some different templates and stuff later, but this is effectively me militarizing and centralizing all commands while also boosting up my economy. <laughs> Look how many more military factories I just got. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Big yes. This is good. Yes. Of course, that means I now need to engage in a lot of trade. But who cares? Because I have a lot more civilian factories to go around, so it's fine. And, of course, I get all their resources, too. Oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, I need as much mil uh, political power as possible. 1.5 per day is nice. It's actually very tempting to stop doing national focuses for a bit. So I can start getting it a lot faster, two and a half per day. But I'm not gonna do that. It's tempting, but I'm not gonna. Instead, I'm gonna start working toward a new Banco de Brasil, which is gonna get me the extra production efficiency and cap and factory growth, not to mention a new industrial concern, 15% consumer goods reduction. Mmm, that's gonna be nice. Of course, the problem here is I don't think there's much for us to do for at least a little bit. I mean, obviously we need to militarize as quickly as possible. This is what the Allies are all doing as well. Now that World War II is out and the Germans are strong, it's kind of a question of 
who can build up fastest um, before the Germans are able to strike. So that's kind of what I'm going to contribute to. Yeah, we need to play this like a proper allies game now, which is weird, but yeah, all right. 100% the next country we need to integrate is Chile. Chile is going to have a very good economy that we can use. We actually need to do a campaign of Chile in the future with a new DLC because there is a particular route that I spotted looking at the dev diaries. And I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. So uh, I won't spoil it. Just, you know, be aware. A Chile campaign is coming up sometime soon. What just happened to Iceland, by the way? Oh, the Germans took it. Oh. Also, the United States got Greenland. Right, that's a thing that sometimes happens now when Denmark goes down, isn't it? Um, and also the Danish are now a German protectorate, too. Weird. Yeah, uh, that does happen sometimes now. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I like to think that maybe this is in a different timeline where the United States outright just bought Greenland from Denmark. Something I actually kind of slightly support. I think that could be actually a strategic advantage someday in the future if global warming continues to go the way it does and the Arctic Circle becomes a more of a contested zone. All right, Chile is now mine. That was like another 30 civilian factories or something like that. And another, eh, just a handful of military factories. Still, that adds up. That was solid. And of course, we now have a whole bunch more troops that I need to add into our army. Let's go ahead and design a couple of new fighters, by the way. I did jump directly to the 1940 airframe, so we'd have a bit more to work with. And this is where usually I think you can start going kind of crazy on some of the heavy machine guns. Typically speaking, you want to make the plane as cheap as possible with as much air attack and sometimes air defense as you can get your hands on. There are some presets here, by the way. Huh. What does this, uh, what does this say? No? Oh, okay. I thought maybe I could just go ahead and use some sort of a template. Oh, this is a template. This is a terrible template. Just one light thing. I don't know why you even offer that as an option. It's garbage. Anyway, this right here, for example, is two heavy machine guns. It's got some self-sealing fuel tanks, which requires more rubber, and that does suck. But with one Type 2 engine, this is about as cheap as I can get with a halfway decent looking plane. I actually did some testing a long time ago when Feedback Gaming was doing a contest between different um, YouTubers to come up with an optimal dog fighting uh, plane. And I didn't win. I think I got like third place or something like that, but it depended a lot on some context as far as like the conditions on who fought where and there was an advantage there. Whatever. The point is... What I found was that agility was not as important as it used to be before the airplane rework. Air attack and defense were absolutely the most important. Get a lot of that, and you have a very good chance of surviving, even if you're not very agile. But agility does help. It's worth preserving this if you can. Anyway, we'll get that going, and then I also want to get another airframe, and this one specifically is going to be for Cass. And you could go for the small bomb bays. These are good in that they give more ground attack than a bomb lock, but they cost three times more in production. So in theory, I probably could just produce more cast by going for a cheap option and end up with more ground attack than if I went for the heavy option. And this honestly should be fine as well. I just, I like the self-sealing fuel tanks because that extra bit of defense just increases your survivability a surprising amount. As long as you have a lot of rubber to go around. Which you don't always, but we'll try that. I mean, freaking heck, I'm playing in Brazil. I mean, we should have a decent amount of rubber, right? All I have to do is, like, one more focus over here somewhere in the Amazon. Actually, we just did it. That's 20 more rubber. Boom. Who's next for us to annex? Believe it or not, I think it's Uruguay over here. 18 civilian factories and 12 military factories. That's pretty decent. We should also consider maybe training up some additional soldiers. What templates do I have that are actually any good? Like, I don't like these guys with military police. Why would I ever want that to be on my regular units? It's kind of ridiculous. I don't mind setting this to say, hey, keep the National Guard there. But otherwise, no. We don't have to worry about this for a while. Why am I wasting support equipment on militarized police? So what happens as far as the promoting of immigration, by the way? Oh, weird. I can promote immigration from Italy, Japan, and Portugal? Huh. Okay, um, the nation I am promoting immigration from will like me more. Local manpower 40% in a state, local construction speed. I, I don't really know why I would want this. This seems like a very expensive thing to do for not a lot of gain. As opposed to, I don't know, just annexing all this territory. Okay, so we got our Bank of Brazil. I can get bicycle infantry. I have never used bike infantry before. I know it's quite the meme, but I've never actually used it. 
I wonder if they're actually any good in this context, how they do in our terrain. Oh, let's see, a bunch of states that have better construction speed, more factories, and so on, more resources. Yeah, so probably a lot of things we want to do down here in order to get some financial stimulation. Alternatively, yeah, we start focusing a bit more on the military. Try to get this up uh, as much as we can. Better military factory construction and so on. Support for democracy, war support, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot to do down here, actually. And then, of course, there's the Air Force. I actually want all of these things. Oh, boy, how do you pick and choose when you want everything? Answer, you continue focusing on the economy. We've got, I don't know, a year? Two years before I can really do a lot. So, um, we might as well just keep scaling. And also integrate Uruguay in here. Why won't Bolivia do this? They don't like me anymore. Why, is it because I hassled you too many times? Oh, they're one opinion off. Whatever, we can fix that later, no big deal. Of course, I can only imagine how painful it's going to be if people actually reject me when I ask them to join my faction. There's Uruguay, though, so that's a bit more for me. Good, factories jumping up to 158. Out of curiosity, the United States has apparently about 250 fac uh, factories. We started as only Brazil, and we're up to 150 by 1940. All right, we're not exactly what I would call the world power yet, but we're getting there. Let's start working toward another research slot. That is the other thing that would let me actually start picking up some serious speed. Uh, let's see, July 1940, what else do I want to be researching? Probably upgrades for things like artillery. Could start working on some better boats. Wouldn't be a bad idea to get submarines. I thought I got cruisers. Maybe I went ahead to reload after that Peru situation. I didn't actually click this. That could very well be. Um, got what I probably want on planes. I mean, an upgrade for an engine wouldn't be bad. But, I don't know. Um, we could start working on the radio. I've got a 40% boost that I hate to waste. But that could be a thing. We get a little ahead on construction speed and so on too. Ay -ay 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 -ay. What do we really want at this point? What's going to be our long-term strategy? For now, I'm going to continue focusing on the artillery because I am working that into literally everything, but still. We could use a lot more options. What I really want is just more freaking <laughs> political power. More political power would be great, please. Venezuela has now been integrated. Beautiful. I'm going to start researching the medium tanks, by the way. I don't know if I'm going to take advantage of them. Um, so this may be a massive waste, but I'm going to get the ability to have them just in case I decide that I'm going to want them for an invasion of Europe in the future. But to be honest, I'm not sure how we're going to fit into the World War II picture. This is kind of a bizarre situation. We could try to help liberate Africa while the Allies focus in Europe, and that would be one way of contributing to the war effort pretty well. But obviously Europe's where all the fun is, and that's where if you can capitulate the right people, it all it all ends anyway. So, why? Italy is declaring war on Greece. They join the Allies. Alright, so most of mainland Europe is indeed falling. Yugoslavia is surprisingly still not at war, but they will be. Anyway, we have that extra research slot. Beautiful. Anything that would give me more political power would be like an instant pickup for me right now. But I don't think anything down here will. I do need the extra operative slot because, alas, my spy got captured in Germany. I guess a Brazilian spy stood out a little bit too much, huh? Is that what you're saying? There goes Yugoslavia. All right, that was only a matter of time. Germans never leave those folks alone. Never. Oh, I forgot that I'm also integrating all these navies every time that we uh, annex some more nations. <laughs> oh, man. We're, we're, yeah. This is fun, actually. This is pretty good. It's a little slow and boring. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we're sitting around waiting for political power and for an economy to build up so we can go and do something fun. But, like, really, though, you know, we're, we're, we're doing good. We're doing all right here. We're just sitting around and just, like, getting stronger for basically no effort. I don't even have to fight anyone, and I'm blobbing. I love to blob, so if I can blob for free, isn't that the best kind of blobbage? There's Paraguay as well. Boom. Oh, finally, my font actually looks respectable again. Hooray! Got a fair number of factories out of Paraguay, too. Okay, so we are producing a good number of planes. Logistically, how are we doing? We're going to need a bit more support equipment and stuff. Anti-air, we're starting to integrate into all of our forces, so that's going to become a thing. For the most part, honestly, we're looking good. What do we need as far as upgrades? Toad artillery and infantry equipment, and that's about it. Oh, we're looking solid, and I'm, I'm building up quite the army here. This is a respectable force. I think at this point, as much as I would like to do a lot of other things as far as boosting up our so-called neglected states and stuff... And the extra oil would be nice. I think it's time to go ahead and start working on things with the military. Let's see what kind of boosts we're able to get for ourselves. 
hopefully something useful that actually gives us a chance. And we're not going to neglect the uh, tank uh, designs as well. Almost done with the basic medium tank chassis. I want to have at least have one level of the armor and the engine available just in case I end up needing some later. I'd like to have two levels, honestly. The extra armored skirts and stuff can certainly be quite nice. But um, if these three right here are the only really important ones, beyond that, I don't know, what would he want? Maybe tank destroyers, effectively? Something to kind of counter Germany directly? Eh, that could be a thing, I don't know. The Germans, I don't know what happened a couple of updates ago, but the Germans have actually been really, really difficult to deal with. So, I am a little bit concerned about them, just a little bit. So let's see. Get some extra army experience and division organization. Yes, please. We can go from mechanized offensive. The breakthrough with tanks is really good. I don't benefit from it right now, though. Would it be better to go down shock and awe when the time comes? Are we going to focus still mostly on just infantry? We might. Ugh, man, it really depends. It really depends. I, I, I could build my economy up a bit more. I could use more factories. Once you get to about 200, you're in really good shape. But I've still only got about 83 military factories. So I'm not in the best spot yet when it comes to actually working on designing good tanks. Like, really good tanks. Anyway, who do we annex next? I guess it could be Bolivia. Who, by the way, is not exactly thrilled with me right now. I'm not sure why you're so angry. Oh, I hold your claimed provinces and some cores. Oh, you, you claimed my lands. Well, Paraguay's land. Somebody's land. Hmm. Well, we'll fix that. Don't worry. You'll be a part of the United States, and then it's a non-issue. Now, technically speaking, I don't have to be integrating all this right now. There's one of the reasons that vassals and stuff actually can be pretty good in this, or I should say puppets, sorry, can be pretty good in Hearts of Iron. I used to hate them. They're not bad, though, because if you have a bunch of puppets, even if they don't have, like, custom focus trees, they just have the standard ones, they'll go down some of those, and they're working on creating a bunch of free infrastructure, factories, resources, and so on, that you're not able to do. You can only do it once, but if I have ten puppets, each of them can do it once, at the same time I'm working on my own nation. So there is something to be said about just leaving a bunch of puppets to kind of do their own thing. That said, at the end of the day, what can I say? I, I, I like to control everything directly. I'm a bit of a control freak. Oh, you know something else I should make sure I do? I forget this all the time. When we finish with this, next thing to do, let's make sure we actually have some sort of naval landing tech. Yeah, we can get at least this. At least getting to level 2 with the naval landing makes naval invasions so much more practical. I forget it all the time because it's so easily buried, but like, it's really good. Okay, we got the Military Academy. Um, defense on core territory? Eh. Motorized companies? Eh, I don't know about any of that. What can we leave to? Tank warfare. Research bonuses for armor tech. We could try getting ahead. Also, decisions to specialize our armor programs. Now, isn't that interesting? Huh. Okay. Specializing heavy guns, too. Really? So you're telling me the way that I'm going to fit into things here with the Allies is I become really good at making tanks and artillery? That's not what I expected. But okay, I, I guess. I still think it's better to go ahead and get the military factory construction speed of 5%. Because the faster I build, the better. I'm still a little bit behind where I'd like to be, but um, okay. I'm basically just waiting to see when the Germans are going to end up declaring war on the Soviets. When they do, that might be my cue to go ahead and start thinking about war. So far, they've made no progress getting into the UK. That's obviously great. Subject could raise their autonomy. Peru? Eh, even if they do, I'll just annex in the old-fashioned way. Um, when the US joins, that's obviously going to be huge. Then we'd have the option to go down over here and do some other stuff. Washington Accords and such. If I could annex all of my current puppets, which is going to take a while, but if I can do that, I won't have to be in a faction. I could leave it. Then I can join the Allies formally and enjoy a lot of different benefits by being allies of the United States. Yeah, but we can't do that until uh, the US is involved in a war. So this whole area is basically useless to me for a while. Now I can imagine in a weird, like let's say multiplayer game, maybe if the US player was doing some sort of a civil war, now that could get kind of interesting very quickly, couldn't it? You know what's really crazy too, by the way, is just the fact that we annexed all of this and I have no unrest. None whatsoever. Everyone is thrilled to be joining the new United States of South America. By the way, when are you guys going to rename yourselves to the United States of North America? Don't you think that gets a little bit confusing? Peru did increase their autonomy, by the way. Doesn't really matter, though. 
It's fine. I can still annex them, so I don't even have to worry about trying to keep their autonomy down nice and low. That's a nice change of pace. We've also now annexed Colombia. Good god, this is taking forever though, for real. I am actually very tempted just to stop doing any focuses. Finish annexing these guys quickly and then we can move on, right? You know? Ugh, god. My navy is actually starting to look kind of respectable, by the way. I've got like 112 ships. It's not huge. Most of it's going to be light cruisers, destroyers, and so on. Stuff that all the poor nations are able to build. But I got a handful of good ships, some battleships, a few heavy cruisers and stuff. Enough that we'd be able to probably tip the scales for a naval landing somewhere. Not sure where. Could be just Africa, honestly. Push up this way and then see if we can chunk our way into Vichy France or maybe even just knock down Italy. That actually might be what I do, now that I think about it. If I can find a way to knock Italy out, just attack the soft underbelly while the US and the UK worry about the Germans for a bit, that could change things around. And then when Italy falls, Germany often finds themselves overspread between the Soviets, um, the Western Front, and the South. And that's when they start to really buckle under the pressure. So maybe we can force that to happen. Well, we have the improved medium tank chassis. I can get some boosts for this kind of soon. So very soon we might want to go for some upgrades to the tanks. Um, do I have just about everything else I would care about? I guess the only other thing we could work on is maybe some upgrades to some navies and stuff like that. I don't feel like I need much else right now for my planes. We can work toward cannons, but like, I don't need to do anything like that. Radio is something I'm missing. Let's go ahead and get that just so we'll be able to have that radio for um, things like tanks and stuff later. But for the most part, yeah, I think we're actually about caught up on everything I really care about. And now Japan declared war on the Philippines. Okay. That means the US is now at war. The giant is awake. We can now invite the United States into my own faction. Tis an interesting idea. It would be a way for us to go ahead and try to knock out Japan earlier than I was expecting. But I feel like we kind of want the US to get with the allies. I would be tempted. This would be an interesting change of pace, for sure. But, like, is that really what's going to be best for winning the game against the Germans? Maybe. I mean, when you think about it, maybe I can go and help them against Japan now, and then they can focus all their effort over here, because we really are still waiting for the Germans to attack the Soviets before we can do anything over here anyway. So this is a way for me to get involved in a war. You know something? Even if it doesn't make sense, I'm gonna do it. Because um, this means that the Americas stand together. Which I think sounds interesting. Oh, and the US is almost capable of taking over my faction. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that at all. It's a good thing I saved before all this happened, because if it turns out that that's really gonna mess me up, then I might have to reload the game. In the meantime, though, we're about to integrate Peru. I'd say we made a lot of progress in this video. We are looking very strong now. We're up to 237 factories. Still not enough to keep up with the US. They're up to about 300. But we're catching up is the cool thing. We are definitely making up some ground. The Germans, on the other hand, are still stupidly scary strong. So we are in nowhere in position to deal with any of them. But hopefully soon we will be. And with some good tactics, we can uh, just basically make history play out, but in a very different way than people are used to. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.